R H incompatibility. Okay, so this would be an interesting topic. Uh, I hope for most of the students. But these are the our learning objectives. So we'll be discussing and coming back to these learning objectives whether we have achieved this or not at the end of the lecture. Okay, so first of all. blood transfusion what is actually blood transfusion what we are discussing is the process of transferring blood and blood based products from one person into the circulatory system of another person okay directly into the circulatory system we transfer the blood and the blood related components from one person into the circulatory system of other person simply this is the blood transfusion Transfusion, uh, basically, we use sometimes as prophylaxis and sometimes as a therapy. So we call it transfusion therapy. Use primarily to treat two conditions. First of all, inadequate oxygen carrying capacity. What this condition is called when you have an inadequate oxygen carrying capacity? We say inadequate anemia, yes. This is called anemia. So this inadequate oxygen carrying capacity or if the patient has anemia, then we use this transfusion therapy. Secondly, inadequate hemostasis. What is hemostasis? What is hemostasis? Anemia, process of clotting of blood. No. Process of clotting of blood is a part of hemostasis. The clotting of blood is part of hemostasis, but we cannot define hemostasis as clotting of blood. The purpose is not to clot the blood. Block the leakage of blood, prevention of blood loss to some extent, maintenance of blood within the blood vessels in its normal fluid state. Yes, this is the hemostasis. That what is the what is the hemostasis? maintenance of blood in its normal fluid state within the blood vessels, this is hemostasis. So coagulation is part of hemostasis, but cannot be defined as coagulation. Okay, so though there are two conditions, uh, basically inadequate anemia, for that we use transfusion therapy and inadequate hemostasis, like, uh, and you know, what are the things that are involved in hemostasis? Kindly reply me quickly so I can move forward. What are the things that are involved in hemostasis? What are the components that are involved in hemostasis? So, I like platelets, very good. Don't reply privately, beta. You are very right. And you can reply to everyone. So, everyone can see the replies. Clotting factors, very good. Clotting factors. Vasoconstriction, platelet clotting factors. Okay, so vasoconstriction to neural reflex. Okay, the platelets and the clotting factors are required. So if there is inadequate hemostasis, we can transfuse the patient with the platelets and the clotting factors. And we would see how we make these platelets and how we transfuse these clotting factors. Okay, so these are the, if I summarize, uh, of course, the details will be discussed in the coming slides, but if I summarize, so I would say the transfusion therapy is given primarily to treat two conditions. The one is inadequate oxygen carrying capacity that is decreased RBC or in anemic, anemic conditions. And the second one is the inadequate hemostasis when we transfuse the patient with the platelets and the clotting factors, whatever is required. Okay. So, okay. This is... I would say this is human blood. The one blood, the one donation that we donate can, is, can save four lives or four components can be made from a single blood donation. Okay, so first of all, this whole blood, because previously we were using whole bloods, but then we find that different patients have different requirements. For example, if a patient has anemia, I think they won't require 
uh, platelets and the clotting factors so it is the you know it is a, uh, on one side it is a wastage of the component like platelet and the clotting factors they are given because we have collected blood and we have not processed it we have not separated it into the components and then we have transfused the blood into the other patient so sec second disadvantage of transfusing the whole blood is volume overload इसका वॉल्यूम ज्यादा है वॉल्यूम ओवरलोड में जाएगा पेशेंट तो वी हैव कम टू कंक्लूजन दैट नाउ वी हैव स्टार्टेड सेपरेटिंग द होल ब्लड डोनेशन इनटू इट्स कंपोनेंट्स लाइक द प्लेटलेट्स विल बी गिवन टू द पेशेंट हु हैज थ्रोम्बोसाइटोपेनिया प्लाज्मा विल बी गिवन टू द पेशेंट हु हैज इनएडिक्वेट हीमोस्टेसिस और द क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर डेफिशिएंसी एंड ओनली द पैक आरबीसी विल बी गिवन टू द पेशेंट दैट इज प्रेजेंटिंग विद एनीमिया ओके सो यू कैन सी दिस होल ब्लड डोनेशन इज is separated into its component which is the red blood cells fresh frozen plasma platelet concentrates and the cryoprecipitates i have a video for how these uh, components are made in the blood bank and that will be shown at the end of the lecture the red blood cells to increase the amount you all know that the red blood cells are given to treat the conditions that are related to anemia or if the patient is going for the surgery and he is does he has anemia so we can use these packed rbcs okay the life span of these packed rbcs is the 42 days in the refrigerator that are stored at the temperature of 4 to 6 degrees celsius okay secondly fresh frozen plasma fresh frozen plasma is kept in the freezer for one year and it is given to the patients with coagulation factor deficiencies or there is so much plasma loss from burns or massive bleeding then we have platelets platelets are stored only for 5 days at room temperature with continuous agitation to prevent their clotting to treat or prevent bleeding due to low platelet level so basically if i summarize the platelets are given to treat thrombocytopenia prophylactic transfusion bhi hoti hai therapeutic transfusion is also given to those who have uh, symptomatic thrombocytopenia cryoprecipitates are given to treat fibrinogen deficiency and one Okay this is a statement from the WHO what they say the safest blood donors are voluntary non remunerated blood donors from low risk populations the world health organizations goal is for all countries to obtain all their blood supplies through voluntary unpaid donors why voluntary unpaid donors why voluntary unpaid donors Yes. Yes. by by voluntary unpaid donors i am asking to you students and nobody is replying you have no idea why voluntary unpaid donations and why they don't want the blood donations to be connected again to be collected again some money or some you know some advantages that might be given to the donors no idea okay whole blood reduce disadvantages for those who cannot afford 
financial benefits because people may start business of it then yes very good uh, people can start the business of this and so many unwanted uh, patients like uh, recently i have heard in news that uh, one patient uh, i was going through my facebook so i saw a post that uh, one down syndrome patient was kidnapped and then the kidneys were taken out so this this is basically organ trading for which we have laws and in assembly that this organ trading and uh, blood also comes under this uh, trading as well that uh, this organ trading should be banned otherwise the people will be kidnapped and these things the organs the cornea the kidneys will be taken out and this blood donation should be voluntary because the professional donors they will be again and again giving blood who, who might have some you know some diseases like hepatitis b like hiv so they might be lying about their health conditions just for the monetary benefits so that's why the blood uh, who says that blood donation should always be voluntary very good replies donors may lie about their health or money very good and voluntary donation is a task including money in it might stop this very good okay so these are the things that for which the uh, for which the who says that blood donation should be voluntary it should not be for monetary benefits it should not be for some other reasons okay so coming to our topic back the whole blood this is diluted i have already told you that this leads to the uh, volume overload so the indications are rapid and massive blood loss hemorrhage that is sudden loss of 25% or more of the blood volumes and the patients who continue to bleed after four units of packed rbc you have transfused four units of packed rbc patient is still bleeding so i think the problem is with hemostasis so if you give whole blood it has platelets as well it has the clotting factors with it and the uh, rbcs of course so at that stage patient might coil the whole blood and the severely bleeding patient bleeding patient that is ka matlab hai hemostasis bhi defected hai rbc is lost bhi hai so in that condition you will again prefer the whole blood over the packed rbc packed rbc are typical uh, indication for anemic patients contraindication is severe chronic anemia why severe chronic anemia is a contraindication for transfusing blood whole blood yes why chronic anemia is a contraindication because in chronic anemia there are several compensatory mechanisms that get activated may cause this we may get it no severe chronic anemia can because in severe chronic anemia there are a lot of compensatory mechanisms that are been activated what are those compensatory mechanisms first of all the heart rate uh, stroke volume is increased and then there is some vasodilation there is some uh, compensation for the anemia like 40% of oxygen is given to the tissues this is the compensation in the chronic anemia state so it is a contraindication for the transfusion of the whole blood packed red blood cells decrease rbc mass decrease production increase destruction this is simply anemia and the causes of anemia are mentioned in the bracket symptomatic uncompensated anemia without hemorrhage Sym symptomatic uncompensated anemia uncompensated anemia are those like which are not compensated by the increase in the stroke volume of the heart and by the uh, extra release of oxygen from the blood so the patient would presenting you with the breathlessness and tachycardia so symptomatic anemia need to be treated by by, by the blood packed rbc transfusion 
okay the cut off given is 6 gram per deciliter even if it is a nutritional anemia and the patient is symptomatic with a, a hb level of 6 so first you have to transfuse you have to bring this level up to 8 or 9 and then not to put extra stress on the heart so and then you will give it the appropriate nutritional therapy for example if it is due to iron deficiency then you will be giving iron and if it is due to b12 or folate so you will be given whatever is indicated contraindications of the pet rbc is chronic anemia i have mentioned already that chronic anemia is well compensated anemia patient is not symptomatic usually because there are so many compensatory mechanisms that are being activated in the uh, body so the chronic anemia does not require emergency transfusion of the pet rbcs and the nutritional deficiency unless symptomatic i have already explained that nutritional deficiency should be treated with the uh, whatever the component is deficient but if the patient becomes symptomatic so you, of course you cannot let the patient go home with this breathlessness and tachycardia you will have to transfuse relieve the symptoms and then give the appropriate therapy whatever is required then coming to the leukocyte reduced rbcs these are not usually given but you should know Uh, that what are leuco reduced rbcs basically the red blood cell component uh, because uh, wbcs are in the pet red cells we have wbcs in a amount of 2 into 10 to the power 9 and they are reduced to 5 into 10 to the power 6 why these donor leukocyte reduced rbcs are required they are rarely required in those patients which have can't repeated history of febrile reactions for example if a patient has got into a febrile reaction after blood transfusion second time you will be transfusing the patient with the leuco reduced rbcs then transfusion associated dark versus host disease you will be able to understand this disease at when you'll be you know going through the topic of the bone marrow transplant okay so at that time i think if i take the lecture anybody else they will be explaining this transfusion associated graft versus host disease okay then cmv transfusion ebv and hiv because the cmv virus eb uh, epstein barr virus they they become latent in the wbc wo jo latent state hoti hai unki wo wbc mein hoti hai so if the wbcs are transfused to so this to stop the cmv transfusion to stop this abstin bar virus transmission to stop this hiv transmission but mostly hiv ki to waise bhi screening hoti hai mostly we want to reduce the cmv transmission and abv transmission then the question may arise why we are not giving leco reduced rbc to every patient because cmv and abstin bar virus can be lethal to anyone but this is not true the cmv transmission is basically uh, basically most of our population is cmv zero positive so this cmv transmission becomes a really challenging uh, matter for those who are immunosuppressed like uh, premature babies like bone marrow transplant receivers jo hote hain recipients jo hote hain then the second thing is the hla allo immunization so these are the conditions where we would require the donor leukocyte reduced rbcs most common is the febrile transfusion reaction the patient who have uh, continuous episodes or the repeated episodes of the febrile hemolytic trans febrile transfusion reaction that means the fever with each transfusion then these patients will be given leuco reduced rbcs in next time segment movements are susceptible as it is a part of yes uh, but not that much because we usually don't screen uh, the blood for cmv Uh, in pregnant patients but uh, for the febrile reactions wo bhi ab filter use hote hain leco reduced filters we use uh, but the main challenging thing is the cmv transmission in that immunosuppressed patient immunocompromised patients okay with a uh, actually uh, according to research some 90% of our population is zero positive for cmv so it's not a challenge for each of us 
but uh, as you are asking that it is a part of torch syndrome so it become it, it is latent in the wbcs if it becomes active only then it becomes a problem so we don't have to transfuse i mean you know suppress patient with the uh, cmb uh, containing blood like c Leukocyte induced blood should be transfused, but there is no indication in the pregnant woman to screen for the CMB. Okay, but yes, premature babies may be screened for the CMB. Platelet transfusions, random donor platelet. The increment that we achieve is around five to ten thousand. Okay, so at a single time, four to six units of random donor platelets are transfused. We have an alternative, which is single donor platelet, which is expensive, in which we collect the whole donation, whole platelet donation from a single donor. So it has many advantages over the random donor platelet. First of all, it gives increment already. Increment is equal, but one thing, what could be the advantage, okay? What do you think that could be the advantage of single donor platelet over the random donor platelet? Okay, nobody is interested to reply. So I am telling you that basically because of the random donor platelet, you know, you are exposing the patient. For example, if a patient is of ITP and require multiple transfusion, so he comes one time, got six unit of platelet. Reactions might lessen as only one donor is involved. Yes, this could be a right answer. Antibodies. Antibodies is most appropriate because every time the patient is being transfused with the six different type of, you know, six different type of uh, platelets. Then next time he's coming and then he's getting transfused with another six type of uh, platelets. So he might develop antibodies against those platelets. He is more likely to develop antibodies against many sort of platelet. Uh, so this would be a problem allo immunization by single donor platelets we are preventing basically allo immunization of the platelet that can result in platelet refractiness that is another topic that if you what is platelet refractiness that you are transfusing the patient with a platelet but the desired increment is not achieved we have a um, increment 20 to 60000 we expect with the four to six units of platelets and one single donor platelet we are expecting the platelet should exceed 60000 but the required increment is not achieved this is the condition which is placed with pregnancy because the patient has developed antibodies against those platelets and when the donor platelets enter the circulation of the recipient the recipient antibodies in the recipient they are destroying the platelet so this is aluminization you know this is the same mechanism for autoimmune hemolytic anemia okay so this is the advantage that those patients who require multiple transfusion of platelet they should be given single donor platelet it's specifically does pac rbc contain wbcs yes pac rbc normally contain wbcs i have already mentioned that leuco reduced rbcs are not all time available in the blood bank and there is no certain requirement for this leuco reduced rbcs but in certain conditions like in premature babies like in patients who, who require exchange transfusion jo jaundice babies hote hain like in bone marrow transplant recipient like in immunosuppressed patients and those who are having repeated episodes of the febrile reactions only for those patients we prepare leuco reduced rbcs by using filters but usually our packed rbc have wbcs i have mentioned the amount as well okay now coming to the platelet transfusion indications indications are very simple indications are very simple uh, this is uh, thrombocytopenia okay thrombocytopenia platelet dysfunction to treat active platelet irritable bleeding this is simply you can say the platelet disorder either the thrombocytopenia or functional defects of the platelets and the patient is bleeding what are those functional defects name them quickly kya problem the platelet function test ke kya problem say just name them no no one is interested okay glassman's thrombocytopenia and bernard soulier syndrome these were the things in which the platelet become functionally defected so because of some glycoprotein that are missing on their surface uh, 
congenitally. So these are the things where we need, need to transfuse the platelet. Or as prophylaxis, those at serious risk of bleeding, for example, the patient is thrombocytopenia of 10,000 and you are expecting that patient can anytime bleed uh, from the mucosal surfaces as well as CNS bleed can occur. In those patients, you want to maintain a higher platelet count even if they are not bleeding. Even if they are not bleeding, then you want to maintain Oh, with a, okay, 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 okay. Typing takes some time. Very good. Yes. Okay, Vita, koi baat nahi. I have limited time for the lecture, no? that's why I cannot wait. I, I I agree that typing takes some time, but if you type uh, shortly like GT, Glensman's thrombocytopenia, BS, <laughs> for but not Soliar syndrome, I would understand. Why not give the patients both packed RBC as well as fresh frozen plasma? I will reply this question later. If I forget to reply, please ask this question again at the end of lecture. Okay. Contraindications. Coming to the contraindications, they hit. What is hit? Heparin induced thrombocytopenia. And I have explained the mechanism of heparin induced thrombocytopenia in my previous lecture that basically it is heparin induced thrombosis that is creating problem. So if you are transfusing a patient with a hit with the platelet, so what will happen? The thrombosis would aggravate because these platelets would further contributing to the thrombosis and not the th in hit the thrombocytopenia is not lethal, but the thrombosis. The lethal thing is the thrombosis. The most devastating thing is the heparin induced thrombosis because the platelets, uh, the antibodies against platelet factor four and the heparin complex, they are directed and they are, you know, they are going into the macrophages. Once they have, on one side, they are creating thrombocytopenia. On the other hand, the FC portion has their receptors on the platelet as well. And these FC portions are getting attached to the FC receptor of the platelet and they are activating the platelet. So platelet once activated, what is the process that we have? The whole clotting mechanism gets activated. I think I don't need to explain the whole mechanism. We have discussed it in our previous lecture that uh, on the phospholipid surface, the coagulation factor, they will uh, be activated and what happened? It could lead to the thrombosis. So basically, in the heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, the lethal thing, the uh, major destructing thing is the thrombosis that is related to this heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. So th that's why the heparin-induced thrombocytopenia is a contraindication for the platelet transfusion. TTP, I think you have gone through the topic of the DIC and TTP conducted by Dr. Shaheen Kossar as I see in the timetable. So uh, you know what is TTP. This is a thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Again, the thrombosis is there. So you don't have to transfuse the platelets. Again, again, it will aggravate the thrombosis. So any condition in which you are suspecting the thrombosis, do not transfuse the patient with the uh, platelets. It can be lethal. And then ITP. ITP is a relative contraindication. Why ITP is a contraindication? Because in the ITP, the patient has well compensated thrombocytopenia. I have seen patients of ITP with a platelet count of 15 to 20,000 and they are very comfortable. There is no history of gum bleed, epistaxis or something related to it. So ITP is a relative uh, contraindication, not an absolute contraindication, but you but that you should avoid unnecessary transfusion in the patients of the ITP only if the patient becomes symptomatic or only if the platelet count becomes uh, the at the stage where there is danger for the spontaneous bleed only at that time you have to transfuse the ITP. Otherwise, if the patient has a uh, you know a platelet count of sixty thousand, do not transfuse. Do not transfuse. Keep very normal to one fifty to three fifty. Or then I have to maintain the patient's platelet count at this level. So ITP patients have you know they have well compensated thrombocytopenia. Okay, fresh frozen plasma. <clears throat> FFP contains all coagulation factors, but some decreased levels of factor 5 and factor 8. One unit is approximately 250 ml. Indications of FFP transfusions are coagulation factor deficiency, liver disease, vitamin K deficiency, warfare and reversal, TTP. FFP should be ABO compatible and RH factor need not to be considered. Okay. 
Now coming to the adverse reactions. Bind to factor four. What is purpura, madam? Purpura, beta. The spots that are formed purpura has a typical definition that purpura ki measurement, and then the spots that are typically formed due to thrombocytopenia. Adverse reaction. Febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction. First of all, I have discussed this that uh, most common the fevers and fever and chills within six hours of uh, transfusion of red cells and platelets. Inflammatory, the cause is the sign and symptom is the fever and chills. After the transfusion, the patient becomes febrile and the cause is inflammatory mediators derived from the donor leukocytes. Leukocyte antibodies directed against monocyte granulocytes or the lymphocyte. Basically, I have already explained that uh, we give leukoreduced RBCs to those patients we, which have repeated episodes of the febrile reaction after the transfusion. So, the cause being related to the donor leukocytes, that's why we prevent the transfusion of the donor leukocytes in those patients who have episodes of fever and chills after transfusion. Treatment is simply antipyretics and the prevention is the limit donor leukocyte contamination. Give leukoreduced RBC or use filters to remove uh, WBCs. The second important reaction is the allergic and the anaphylactic reaction. In which there is allergic and anaphylactic reaction, the classic sign is that is there is no fever. Just after a few ml of plasma or blood, this allergic reaction start. I don't need to explain the mechanism. In fact, you will explain the mechanism, what kind of anaphylactic reactions are, what is the cause of the anaphylactic reaction, and how they take place. Anaphylactic reaction, but I hypersensitivity, but immunity, hypersensitive type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4. So, what is anaphylactic reaction? Kisi bhi allergen se ho jate Type 1 hypersensitivity. Okay, next. Kya hota hai anaphylactic reaction mein? Students kindly reply. Okay, hypersensitivity increase and stress the massive degranulation of mast cell and mast cell degranulation, systemic systemic allergic response. Yes, the, the, the key is the systemic allergic response that this hypersensitivity type reaction, mast cell degranulation, this takes place in the whole body. You know, the, the they are not limited to a certain area. Uh, they are uh, their systemic allergic response. So it results in urticaria, hives, hypotension, bronchospasm, abdominal cramps, dyspnea, erythema. So it is, you know, it is life threatening. And if an electric reaction is life threatening, patient does not have fever, but they have widespread symptom, hypotension, bronchospasm, abdominal cramps. So allergens, the cause is that allergens are in the donor plasma. Hypersensitivity hoti kisi allergen se hai. So allergen kaha hai? The patient is exposed to the new donor blood. So the allergen is present in the donor plasma. IgE is present in the recipient plasma. Immediate hypersensitivity type 1 reaction would take place. And this would be systemic allergic response. Okay. So... Anti, sometimes it is due to IgE. Say normally it is due to IgE and we know that hypersensitivity is something that those donor plasma, that allergen in the donor plasma is not allergen to everyone, but it is allergen to that particular patient which is who is having this uh, hypersensitivity type 1 reaction with those allergens, okay? But there is some, uh, in some reactions, IgA is involved. The patients who are IgA deficient, they have anti-IgA, very rare, one in, you know, 18,000, 
they, uh, these patients are IgA deficient. And these IgA deficient patients have anti IgA antibodies in their plasma. So they react with the IgA in the donor plasma. Mostly anaphylactic patients ko investigate karna chahiye patient ko for IgA deficiency. Okay, then treatment, administer antihistamine, epinephrine, steroid, so we have anaphylactic reaction ka treatment hai, that would be given to these patients who have anaphylactic or allergic reaction after blood transfusion. So if it is simply allergic reaction, the patient would complain of, you know, at local site of the blood transfusion, if the patient is complaining of allergic reaction within seconds, within minutes, Jai wo, you know, the patient will inform you that I'm having extreme itch at the site of administration. So you'll stop the transfusion, you'll, the, you'll notice the red skin in that area, you'll notice the hives in that area, and you'll uh, give the patient antihistamine simply. But if the patient develops the symptoms of hypotension along with these itch and allergic symptoms, so you will move towards the epinephrine and the corticosteroid and air with support, of course, whatever treatment is given to prevent or treat hyper sensitivity reaction type one, especially anaphylaxis, okay? Then coming to the hemolytic transfusion reactions. Hemolytic transfusion reactions, they are uh, because of two re reasons, ABO incompatibility and the RH incompatibility. ABO incompatibility, what type of antibodies we have in ABO system, who will answer me? No, nobody knows what type of antibodies we have in ABO system. The Consi class IgA, IgE, IgG, IgM. Anti-A, anti-B, anti-AB. Beta anti-A, anti-B, anti-AB to hai. But IgG, IgM. Yes, IgM we have. No, no, no. We don't have IgG in ABO system. We have IgM in the ABO system. In the RA system, we have IgG antibodies. Okay. If I'm asking about the class of antibody, that means G A M E D. Okay. IgM is the antibody and we know that IgM is the largest antibody. So this is the system of ABO antibody. If there is hemolytic transfusion reaction, what would happen? You transfuse the patient with the mismatched blood and immediately IgM is a cold antibody. It reacts at, you know, room temperature. It reacts at colder temperature. Blood, how is it? Cold, it is cold. It is room temperature. Even then, it is cold. Okay. So these IgM antibodies, when they get into the circulation, uh, these IgM antibodies, which are present in the preformed antibodies, are present in the donor, and you transfuse the patient with the mismatched blood, for example, anti B in the donor plasma, in the recipient plasma, and you transfuse with the B positive or B negative blood. What would happen? Immediate reaction between the IgM B anti B and the B red cells. B and A antigens are present on the red cell. So they immediately attack and for result in the antigen antibody reaction throughout the systemic circulation. Okay. Hemolytic transfusion reaction, of course, the IgM antibodies or the anti A and B are reacting with the A and B antigen on the red blood surface. What they will do, what are the consequences of antigen antibody reaction? I, they are, you know, they will lyse the red blood cell. So burning, that's why they are called hemolytic transfusion reaction in which there is hemolysis. So imagine that the blood is lysed, RBCs are lysed, what would happen? Hemoglobin would be released into the circulation and the, the consequences, hemolytic anemia We have gone through the topic of the hemolytic anemia. So same thing would happen here with the IgM and we have uh, two types of hemolysis. I think you have gone through the topic extravascular hemolysis, intravascular hemolysis. So what type of hemolysis is going on here? Who will reply me? What type of hemolysis? Intravascular, very good. IgM antibodies, intravascular hemolysis, very good. So this is intravascular hemolysis. Uh, burning at the IV line site, fever, chills, dyspnea. Shock, cardiovascular collapse, hemoglobin urea, hemoglobinemia, renal failure. This this would lead to the renal failure and ultimately DIC. This is intravascular hemolysis. If you have gone through the topic, this is no challenge for you to know about the hemolytic transfusion reaction. Only the cause is different. Only the cause is different. This is 
due to the this some time of allo this is sort of allo immunization this is not autoimmune okay so the patient's foam test might acha foam test positive hoga negative hoga hmm positive hoga okay what does it mean positive foam test ka kya matlab hota hai we have gone through the topic of wo uh, hemolytic anemia na am i right hemolytic anemia discuss ho chuka hai intravascular extravascular hemolysis hemolysis is going on it indicates antibodies are present immune hemolysis antibody okay the one who is replied immune hemolysis it is somewhat true okay it is somewhat true Antibodies are attached to the RBCs. Very good. This reply: Antibodies are attached to the RBCs. Antibodies are. One patient replied: It indicates antibodies are present. No, Coombs test positive. If direct Coombs test positive, it does not indicate that antibodies are present. More specific होना पड़ेगा. Yes, this reply is true that. एंटीबॉडीज आर अटैच टू द आर बी सीज डायरेक्ट कूम्स टेस्ट अगर पॉजिटिव है दैट मीन्स एंटीबॉडीज आर अटैच टू द आर बी सीज दैट मीन्स द आर बी सीज आर सेंसिटाइज ओके हेमोग्लोबिन यूरिया होगा हेमोग्लोबिन रीनल फेरियर डी आई सी इज इंट इट अबाउट हेरिडिट्रीशियोसाइट आई डिट गेट दिस क्वेश्चन हेरिडिट्रीशियोसाइट तो कुछ होता ही नहीं है हेरिडिटरी शिस्टोसाइड का बोलते शिस्टोसाइड इज फ्रेगमेंटेड आरबीसी इट इज नॉट हेरिडिटरी हेमोलिटिक ट्रांसफ्यूजन रिएक्शन ट्रीटमेंट इज स्टॉप ट्रांसफ्यूजन एज सोन एज द रिएक्शन इज सस्पेक्टेड चेक द नेम हमने पेशेंट को क्या करना है सबसे पहले सबसे पहले क्या करना है फर्स्ट स्टेप याद रखिएगा स्टॉप ट्रांसफ्यूजन नेम बाद में चेक होगा टाइप cross match is sub urine exam renal protection fluid restriction iv line maintenance these are at the last first of all stop transfusion the first step is to stop transfusion okay acute hemolytic transfusion the acute hemolytic reactions cause abo incompatibility igm antibodies induced complement mediated lysis ab iske hemolytic reactions mein uh, acute जो हम डिस्कस कर रहे हैं एबीओ इन कॉम्पेटेबिलिटी आईजीएम एंटीबॉडीज कॉम्प्लीमेंट मीडिएटेड लाइसिस होगी एंटीबॉडीज टू एंटीजन सच एज एबीओ कैल एंड किट ऑफर इन यू सफिशिएंट कॉम्प्लीमेंट एक्टिवेशन वन इज द एबीओ हेमोलिसिस मतलब द कंडीशंस दे आर टेलिंग दैट वेयर दिस एक्यूट हेमोलिटिक ट्रांसफ्यूजन रिएक्शन टेक प्लेस तो एबीओ एंटीबॉडीज की वजह से सेकंड जो टू एंटीबॉडीज व्हिच आर रिस्पांसिबल इन दिस ब्लड सिस्टम आर द कैल एंड किट ओके the direct coombs test is typically positive unless all of the donor red cells have lysed you know all that the coombs test is positive if the antibodies are attached to the rbc so here the antibodies of course they are getting attached to the rbc that's why they are lysing rbc so direct coombs test will be positive if it is negative that means all the sensitized red cells have been lysed that's why the coombs test is becoming negative and then we have delayed hemolytic reactions hemolysis ek to immediate ho gayi जो कि प्री फॉर्म एंटीबॉडीज की वजह से हो गई एबीओ सिस्टम के एंटीबॉडीज होती है कैल होता है किड होती है देन डिलेड हेमोलिटिक रिएक्शंस वी हैव डिलेड हेमोलिटिक रिएक्शंस ड्यू टू आईजीजी एंटीबॉडीज दैट रिकॉग्नाइजेस माइनर रेड सेल एंटीजेंस डू यू अंडरस्टैंड काइंडली टेल मी इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड द माइनर रेड सेल्स एंड द मेजर रेड सेल एंटीजेंस do you understand the minor red cell do you understand the meaning of this minor red cell antigen major are abo and rh okay minor Kel kids, okay. So you understand? So 
do you understand non rhd antigens expressed on erythrocytes so you basically you understand the minor antigens okay so these antibodies recognize minor red cell antigens recipient was sensitized previously abs remain undetected during routine pre transfusion testing antibodies result in red cell opsonization extravascular hemolysis and spherocytosis and are associated with relatively major signs and symptoms triad of fever anemia hyperbilirubinemia basically if i explain what delayed hemolytic transfusion is these are igg antibodies against minor red cell antigens so these are not preformed okay the patient is get sensitized in repeated blood transfusion we are talking about those patients who get repeated transfusions can you tell me the conditions in which the patients are repeatedly transfused so with this delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction become an issue only in those patients which are repeat thalassemia yes thalassemia is one uh, condition very good thalassemia is blood dependent anemia na transfusion dependent anemia beta why may be in thalassemia of course thalassemia is a blood transfusion dependent anemia and what uh, other condition with the patient get repeatedly transfused do okay, make patients get hemophilia didn't get transfusion again and again they are transfused with the cryoprecipitate or the factor it concentrates they are not transfused with the red cell sickle cell to some extent yes leukemic conditions bhi hoti hain myelodysplastic syndrome is also a transfusion dependent anemia so whatever the reason if the patient is transfusion dependent anemia they will be sensitized with so many they ha already have been exposed because hum jo routine cross matching karte hain blood bank mein so we check the patient's blood group okay then we screen cross match mein jo screen kar rahe hain we are basically screening for the major blood groups ek to positive negative ke liye and the second the ab ke liye minor red cells ke liye we are not screening the patient okay so what happen these minor for example the patient is the recipient is some kid duffy or the kid deficient and you once transfuse the patient with the kid antigen containing red blood cells so the patient would develop anti kid antibody again you transfuse the patient would develop anti kid antibody again you transfuse some kid uh, uh, positive blood what would happen this time the anti kid antibody would react with the kid antigen on the red blood surface but this would not be a uh, intravascular hemolysis or the life threatening hemolysis like abo because the antibody here is not complement fixing this is igg antibody so it would be uh, an extravascular hemolysis and um, antibodies result in red cell opsonization extravascular hemolysis and spherocytosis and are associated with relatively minor signs and symptoms the patient would come to you with the symptoms of extravascular hemolysis fever hoga anemia hoga hyperbilirubinemia hoga how would you come up to the conclusion with a history of the previous transfusion okay so that's why thalassemic blood thalassemic patients ko jo hai wo pre transfusion screening ki jati hai for the uh, The antibodies that they have developed, that is antibody screening. Okay, हम क्या करते हैं recipient की क्या कर लेते हैं antibody screening कर लेते हैं antibody screening में हमें ये पता चल जाता है कि recipient में ये this antibody is present in the recipient. So if you identify the recipient uh, antibody, so what would happen that you will be again next time you will be giving the blood to the that particular antigen deficient blood to the patient. ठीक है Are you getting my point? Are you getting my point? Acha, jo new new research hai. According to them, I think uh, if I'm not wrong, thalassemia patients jo hain, they have mostly they have cell antibodies. Mostly they have cell antibodies.
but we cannot perform tests for minor antigens. We do perform tests for minor antigens. I have already explained that in those patients which are given repeated transfusions, we basically screen those patients for their red cell and uh, antibodies. Okay, the test is called antibody screening. Okay, once we identify what type of antibody they have, for example, in the antibody screening, we come to know that they have uh, anti kid antibody. For what we'll do, we'll give the pay, whatever the unit that we are going to transfuse to those patients, we will screen that uh, uh, unit for the kid antigen. They, these patients would be given kid antigen deficient red blood cells because the patient has anti kid antibody. Now you got it? Thoda difficult to understand. two types of testing basically we are doing antibody screening in the recipient and we are giving uh, doing minor antigen testing on the red blood cells that we are going to transfuse to the patient okay so two tests we are performing antibody screening for the recipient and minor antigen testing on the donor the third reaction is the bacterial contamination this is simply the uh, symptoms are fever, shock, DIC. Treatment is stop transfusion, bacterial exam and culture, and antibiotic. Guess how the bacterial con con contamination ka jo reaction hota hai? Fever, shock, DIC. Zyada, wo kya hota hai? Gram negative organisms ka jo reaction hota hai. Patient goes into the some kind sort of septic shock as well. So this is uh, uh, this needs to be taken care of. Stop transfusion immediately. Send the blood for the culture and give antibiotics to the patient. Then we have this transfusion related lung injury. Uh, the incidence of this transfusion related lung injury has been reduced. It's very rare now. Trolley. We call it trolley. It's a severe, frequently fatal complication in which factors in a transfused blood product trigger the activation of neutrophils in the lung microvasculature. Although the incidence of trolley has been reduced, but it's an important topic yet to be discussed in the scenario of the blood transfusion in the spectrum of blood transfusion. The signs symptoms are fever, chills, cough, dyspnea, hypotension, okay? So basically identifying a blood transfusion reaction because most of all are present with the fever. So it becomes a challenge sometimes. What kind of, you know, transfusion reaction it is. So you should know, for example, fever, if the patient has developed fever after a transfusion, what it could be, you should, you should have in your mind that it can be a hemolytic transfusion reaction that can present with fever. No, hemolytic transfusion reaction may fever new or the bacterial contamination, transfusion related lung injury. For example, DD scab banana gap, transfusion related lung injury, bacterial contamination, or febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction. Hemolytic transfusion reaction is because there is so much hemolysis, the patient may or may not have fever. It's not uh, you know, it's not an absolute sign. But bacterial contamination with the fever hoga hoga, trolley may fever hoga, or febrile transfusion reaction may fever hoga. Fever, chills, cup, dyspnea, hypotension. Again, this dyspnea and hypotension, this can occur in hemolytic transfusion reaction, immediate hemolytic transfusion reaction in trolley and in bacterial contamination. So the sign symptoms are overlapping and identifying a blood transfusion reaction is a challenge. Okay. This is basically the pathophysiology of trolley in which they say anti-leukocyte antibodies in the donor plasma. Here you need to know that antibodies here are in the donor plasma. Okay. Induce complement with mostly jo antibodies and they are in the donor plasma. Mostly antibodies are in donor plasma. Okay. Then class is over. Bhai, class time to class to late shuru hui thi. Class to late shuru hui thi. Abhi to baaki hai meri class. Okay. Yo. Is this the host who is telling me ma'am class time is over? Or some student? Beta host will let me know when the class time is over. 
Okay, so basically the neutrophils are primed. Here, neutrophils are primed and the antibodies in the donor plasma, they get attached to the neutrophils. Basically, these are HNA antibodies. Important thing to know is that these neutrophils, they uh, induce endothelial damage, capillary leakage, and subsequent edema and lead to the pathological net formation in the lung vasculature, pulmonary vasculature. So the patient with, will present with the signs, symptoms of lung. So basically, it's a diagnosis of exclusion, prevention, deferral donor antibodies in the donor plasma, leukoreduce RBC antibodies in his patients. Okay. This, uh, the important thing to know in trolley is that important point to remember is that mostly antibodies, they are present in the donor plasma. So if you identify this reaction that the donor, this blood was given, this blood was given to this patient and the patient develops trolley. So as a preventive measure, you have to go back to the donor and you will remove that donor for further donations. Okay? Because he has antibodies uh, against neutrophils. So basically, where are antibodies develop in the donor? Mein? Basically, these donors are sometimes multiple transfused patients. Which are likely, unlikely, but usually both are multiparous female. Okay. Multiparous female due to repeated exposure to the you know paternal antigens, jo multiple pregnancies on QE just give us different antigens ka exposure hota and that they develop those antibodies. So multiparous female usually they are uh, prone to give such type of reactions if they if their plasma is used as donation. Autotransfusion, I'll just go quickly through this. Autotransfusion is when a person donates its own blood, for example, before surgery. I am a healthy female and I am going for an elective surgery like for cholelithiasis like, uh, or any other elective procedure. So I will donate my own blood. It will reduce the transmission of infections like HIV, SCV, HBV, or infection can be chance come on. So I will donate my own blood before surgery. And this is, uh, and then I'll take hematinix for increasing my HB and then I'll go through the procedure. And if during the procedure, the blood is required, my own blood will be given to me. This is autologous. This is the idea behind the autologous transfusion and it is applicable only in the elective surgical procedures. No risk of infectious disease, no transfusion reaction, no compatibility testing, reduced demand on blood banking stores and immediate source of autologous blood. Okay, hemovigilance. Up now, I, I was telling you that the incidence of trolley has been reduced so much. So this is because of the hemovigilance. Hemovigilance, basically, this practice is set up by UK uh, government that hemovigilance is a set of surveillance procedures covering the entire blood transfusion chain from the donation and the processing of blood and its components through to their through to their provision and transfusion to the patient and including their follow-up. If I summarize, it starts it starts from you know procedures from blood donation, blood donation collection up to the transfusion and any undesired unwanted reaction even after the transfusion should be reported to a committee, should be reported to the authority to prevent such occurrences in the future. Now coming to the RH incompatibility that, you know, that RH negative female in the rec repeated exposure to RH positive baby, beta, you are continuously reminding me that the class time is over. Who is this? RH factor is inherited, passed from parents to children through the genes. Most people are RH positive. I am getting really confused how to cover this topic. RH positive. I have to spare some time for the question as well. So basically, blood from the baby can cross into the bloodstream of the mother, especially during the delivery. When delivery is or sometime uh, abrupt placenta or any other procedure that occur in the pregnancy for sometime abortion, sometime. Uh, anything that can make the baby's RBCs enter into the maternal circulation. So this mother is RH negative, the baby is RH positive, these RH positive cells, they will enter into the mother. What would happen? The mother will make antibodies against those RH positive cells. 
it would not harm the first baby but in the second baby in the second pregnancy the mother has already preformed antibodies against rh positive cells so these antibodies through the maternal circulation because through the placenta they will enter into the fetal circulation and then here in the fetal circulation what they will be causing they will be causing antibody antigen reaction and this antigen antibody reaction as you can see here it's taking place in the second pregnancy where in the fetal circulation and so it would be lead to the extravascular hemolysis some sort of jaundice uh, and uh, hyperbilirubinemia if not protected but this is a preventable disease we give the mother nowadays and uh, Leogram injections that prevent the formation of antibodies in the mother. Antibodies stay in body cause problem the second or later pregnancy if the baby is Irish positive. The Irish antibodies can cross the placenta and attack the baby's red blood cell. This can lead to hemolytic anemia in the baby. Okay, I think these were the two videos. You please save this link and you can watch it. Uh, I don't have enough time to play these videos. Now I would like to do quickly uh, take up some questions. If you have any question, kindly ask. And these are the two links. Uh, one for the ek to Irish positive katha. Second video was especially for those who are interested to know how the components are prepared from the blood in the blood bank. This was the procedure. So can you save this link? The better up, yes, ask your questions. Acha, okay, I'm sending these links in chat. Chalega? Post. Okay, beta. Acha, beta, can you please send these slides? But these lectures will be uploaded in LMS system soon. Don't you worry. Don't you need to worry about the lectures. Okay. I have sent the links in chat. Madam, there was a question asked which you said to remind. Haan, toh, please ask that question. I don't remember that question, but it was good. Madam, what would be the cutoff criteria for the classification of major, minor, RBC antigen? Is it the incidence? In, yes, is it, this is the incidence in population. Basically, uh, RH and these... Uh, this is the incidence in population. ABO is the major blood, blood group and RH is the other system. Major may basically ABO hi hota hai. RH is also a minor group, but it has higher frequency. So in routine testing, we screen for the RH. Ha, why not give the patients both pegged RBC as well as fresh frozen plasma? If the hemostasis is not achieved, so we give the patient with the packed RBC. But it depends on what is the requirement of the patient. If the patient is typically anemic and it's not bleeding, so that means that the patient does not have any problem with the hemostasis. So we will transfuse the patient with the packed RBC. But it is a, if it is a profusely bleeding patient, so we'll give the packed RBC as well as the fresh frozen plasma because nowadays the blood uh, banks, blood banks do not have usually a whole blood. So we packed RBC with the fresh frozen plasma, we then platelets be doing it. But there are some blood banks, you know, it it is it is basically depends on the development. I don't know how much development has now occurred in those areas, but the component separation therapy is not available in every blood bank. It's in big blood banks. So what happened? That they just collect the blood and then they keep it and then they transfuse the patient with the whole blood. So, un patients ko profusely bleeding patients ko whole blood de hai, anemic patient ko bila wajah, whole blood mil rahe, volume overload mein de rahe, dilutional anemia is a problem there. But 
extremely advanced blood banks and so we have component separation therapy our blood sample bottles cap color stand yes blood sample bottle cap color jo hai na wo standardized hota hai for example blue top jo hai that we use for wo blue top ke andar jo hai wo sodium citrate hota hai as an anti coagulant and that is typically used for ptl aptt aur jo purple top hota hai usme edta hota hai that is used for cbc aur red top jo hota hai usme koi anti coagulant nahi hota this is for the chemistry chem- chemistry related jitne test hai for example uc lft we use that yellow cap and red cap can be replaceable but yellow cap has some gel that clots the blood immediately and you can get the serum more quickly as compared to the red top any other question any other question okay then the class time is over so you are most welcome if you have even uh, you come up to a question after the lecture even you can come to my office i am on leave for few days but uh, after tuesday i think i'll be joining the college again so you can come and ask any time hello chale band kar le dismiss kar de meeting Okay I'll say professor